Morris. What a wonderful, mm, what a wonderful cask of Gostinis you made. And they smell so divine, especially in our nice little skull decanter. And if you don't mind, I'm going to imbibe a little bit before the show starts. Mmm, <laughs> yes indeed. Indeed, let's put the cork back in. There we go. Mmm. Let me see. Ah, smells delicious. Mmm, you've outdone yourself, Boris. You've outdone yourself. Oh, well, welcome to Monster Movie Night. I'm your internet horror host, Bobby Gelmonster, along with my co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. I was just complimenting Boris on tonight's um, cask of Gostinis that he fixed for, uh, for me. Boris is one of the best Gostini makers anywhere this side of Transylvania. <laughs> well, you should take a bow, Boris, because it's, it's the truth. And, and honestly, after a day and night's work here at the, uh, at the museum, Gargoyle Manor, going through all the artifacts and doing this and doing that, you know, I need to take a time out to wet my whistle once a while, once in a while, especially when I get ready to do tonight's show. <laughs> Maybe I should try to do it more often, you know, get that tongue all wet and slippery and maybe I can actually pronounce a lot of the words. <laughs> Perhaps my Transylvanian accent won't be slipping through, so excuse me one second. And to you, if you are out there, you have your own Gostinis, please imbibe for a few more seconds. Mmm, delicious, delicious. Anyway, tonight's feature, my dear fiends and ghouls, <laughs> tonight's feature is called the Castle of Evil. Mm -hmm. And it is indeed a scarifying flick. It is so scary, in fact, in case that any of you out there perhaps should drop dead at any moment because it's so horrifying. We here at Monster Movie Night has a special arrangement with the management of the films that you can have your very own little coffin to, to put your, well, remains or cremains left in it. You get a nice nifty little lid and you get a nice nifty little box which is basically the coffin and you can put well your family uh, members remains or you can use it as a key holder my beautiful wife she makes these and uh, puts them in our shop gothic charms in case any of you may be interested so you know if you are shoot us an email or go to goth oh goth to gothic charms well actually gothic-charms.com <laughs> That's a mouthful. Anyway, so we're prepared. We have our gostinis. We have our coffins. When we're ready for tonight's feature film, Castle of Evil. So let's tune in to the old internet haunted TV and see if we can't stir some ghoulishness up. Eh, what, Boris? Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'll come and get you. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs>
Señora de Esperanza. Yes, Machado. I have finished. He's in a gasket. Just what you wanted, no? I believe this is what you wanted. Yes? You are most generous. Or maybe I should say, almost generous. Oh? This is a lot of money for what should have been a very simple job. Tell me, you have a dead certificate? I told you the doctor signed it this morning. Oh, yes. The doctor examined the body? Of course. That's strange, because when I started to work on him, I found he wasn't dead. By then, it was too late to stop, and I'm sure you wouldn't want me to. But I said to myself, Machado, this puts you in an awkward position. You're a reputable undertaker. You wouldn't want to be known as a murderer. I hope you understand, senora. How much? On two occasions, I myself have seen people who have been given a drug similar to Kodari. Even a doctor would be fooled into thinking a person was dead. So I said to myself, Machado, why should anybody take such a drug themselves? The answer was simple, Senora Lupe. Nobody would, but if somebody else was to give them the drug, collected a dead certificate from an innocent doctor, hired a competent man like myself to complete the job for them, well, <laughs> I was proud to be part of such a plan. How much? Of course, the authorities would be interested in such an arrangement. But I am an honest man. Shall we say this much again? And this would be the end of it? Senora. Do you mind? That's what it's for. to a lasting friendship based on mutual trust. And now, with your permission, senora, I will pick up my things in the laboratory on the way out. Many thanks for your kindness. I don't like greedy people, Muchado. You saw Kovic die. Now I watch you die.
Frankie and Johnny were lovers. Oh, Lordy, how they could love. They swore to be true to each other. As true as the stars above, he was her man. Oh, but he done her wrong. Oh, Frankie went down to the corner to get her a glass of beer. She said to that fat bartender, has my northern man been here? He was my man. Oh, but he done me wrong. Oh, don't stop, Sam. <laughs> hey, that's the best hand I got since I played the Knights of Pythia's fish fry at Perth Amboy, New Jersey. <laughs> Anyway, it's the best you're on the ship. Or is it a boat? I never could get those straight. I talked to the captain. He says Kovic hasn't been on this yacht in over two years. Not since the accident. He's just paid to sit on the mainland and ferry people back and forth. He's only done that three or four times. But this is strange. Nobody gets to see Kovic in person. Not even the captain. They do business with that native. His housekeeper. Anyway, absolutely no one else gets to see Kobe. Do you have any idea what doctor attended him after his accident, Dr. Corazon? No. I was in Nassau when it happened. But after what he did to me, I knew he wouldn't call me. I heard he was badly burned. That's all I know. Well, I heard that much myself. There's no reason for me to worry about it. Here's to freedom. I know, he's hurt all of you. But you have no idea how it's been with me all these years. I had a good law practice when I met Kovic. He virtually blackmailed me into working for him. And there was no way out. And I'm sure you all know how that is. When a man has that much power, you do what he says or else. I had no idea he was this sick, though. And I don't understand about the will. Why he didn't call on me to prepare it for him. I'm in the terminal stages of a grave illness. I want you to come to Castle Montego for the reading of my will, which I'm sure will interest you. In my lifetime, I've offended you, and I want to make amends. Signed, Kovic. What a crazy sense of humor. Offended me. He threw me out on my can. Was anything added to your cable? No, I don't think so. How long did you know him, Sable? Oh, quite a while. We had, well, what you might call an understanding. Oh, he was a louse in some ways, but in other ways he was brilliant. I think that's what got to me. I never met anybody quite like him. He was way ahead of everybody else in electronics. Everywhere we went, people were in awe of him. I liked that. Well, anyway, we all aren't lucky enough to like the person we fall in love with. It's all over now. Maybe she's right. The guy's dying. Maybe we should have some kind of respect. Respect? A man like Kovic? Mr. Holly, have you ever had a small child stand in front of you and tell you he's hungry? Have you ever tried to go to sleep at night and seen a thousand such eyes saying the same thing and know in your heart that your promise to them are as empty as their stomachs? The tongue silver mines were my people's birthright and Kovic stole them. Don't ask me to respect such a man. I long for the day I can walk on his grave. You know, that old man is nuttier than a fruitcake. 
Yeah. You know, Hawley, when the sparrow gets involved with a hawk, there's no doubt as to the outcome. The sparrow doesn't have to like it, you know. I think this boat ride is getting on everybody's nerves. What do you think this is all about, Matt? I don't know, Carol. I really don't know. I'm sure gonna find out. Looks like everybody inside there feels the same way as I. I sure have missed you, honey. You look wonderful. I told you I'd be back. Remember? Oh, I remember, but uh, now stop me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that about two years ago? Yeah, something like that. Really had no choice, dear. Matter of fact, I was on my way back when I got Kovic's wire. Two years of dreaming of a romantic reunion. We meet on the dock and you do everything but practically poke me in the ribs with your thumb and say, what's new, baby? That's very romantic. Well, I wasn't so sure I'd get such a warm welcome after two years. You know I love you. Heck, I wanted to just grab you and give you a big fat kiss right there, but I was afraid you might throw me in the bay. <laughs> it's holding you back now, stranger. Not a thing. to walk up, Sable? I've never been here before. He wouldn't let me on the island. And he didn't spend much time here himself before the accident. Well, all we can get out here is wet. Come on, let's go. Yes, yes, um, hmm, well, you know, it's, it's, uh, yes, here at uh, Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, that's right, I'm Bobby Gamonster, internet horror host of Monster Movie Night, <laughs> yes, 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 actually I am on the uh, ballot for 2020, the uh, horror host, horror host, horror host hall of fame. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, thank you, thank you. I I am quite honored. And yes, there are a lot of a lot of stiff competition out there. I'm just I'm just humbled and honored to be a part of it. Well, anyway, I'm calling to see if you can maybe send out some special pizzas. That's right. Um, let's see. We want two with well. Let's see the toppings. We'd like. Uh, uh, a little bit of dead man's hair and some uh, cut off thumbs. That's right, cut off thumbs, not toes, but thumbs. And and uh, what what worse? Oh oh yes, and we want two more of those that has a uh, rotting anchovies. 
Rob yes, riding anchovies. Yes, that's for my co-host Boris T. Buzzard. Oh, yeah, oh, you've heard of him. He's heard of you, Boris. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yes, and uh, we'd like two more. That the vegetarian for for my wife. She she likes the um, well as long as it's got vegan. Uh, uh, well, vegans, actually, that's right, vegans, anything with vegans on it. Uh, you, you may have to go out and rustle up a few, but uh, as long as they, they're only meat eaters, uh, that's been, that, uh, that, yes, that's right. We, we, yes, you understand what I'm talking about. Yes, she, she's trying to be vegan now. So, uh, yes, yes, uh, okay, expected in how long? Oh, okay, five minutes or less. Oh, excellent. You going by bat mail or bat car? Bat car. Hmm. Must be Batman. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, oh, yes. And, and please do continue to watch Monster Movie Night. We, we have wonderful episodes every, every uh, week. And you can always go back to our website and see it, all our past uh, seasons and episodes. Oh, yes, there's over 200 of them. That's right. <laughs> oh, yes, we have been busy. Well, okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll be expecting you any time now. We'll put the, uh, huh, we'll set a few nice welcoming traps out for you. <laughs> right, Boris? Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, well, that's... That's very nice of them. They always get wonderful service from the mortuary around here. They make such wonderful pizzas, don't they, Boris? <laughs> Let's get back to the show. <laughs> Tell you. <laughs> of the island. I'm Lupi Tical de Esperanza. You are Matt Granger. You would be Carol Harris. Just call me Sable. <laughs> Tonky, I know. Signora. Dr. Corozal. Signora de Esperanza. And of course, Robert Hawley. It's a pleasure. I'll be with you in a moment. Cheery little spot, huh? Yes, yeah, quite a setup. Toby bought the place several years ago. I handled a deal for him, but never did get to see it. Why anybody would want it, I don't know. Cost a small fortune, too. Gives me the creeps. Mr. Kovic would like you to come with me, please. <laughs> Mr. Kovic is dead. Won't you be seated? It's Mr. Kovic's wish. When did it happen, ma'am? He passed away this morning. There's anything like that. It is Kovac. He has on the ring, just like this. There are only two of these in the world. 
that were made by an old silversmith in my village. He recorded it before he died. I was left instructions by Mr. Kovac when he knew he was going to die before seeing any of you. This was a dying man's last request. So I'm sure you will want to comply with his wishes. Will you please come with me? Would you be seated, please? You have all come a great way to hear the reading of the will. Mr. Kovic is disappointed that he cannot read it to you since he prepared it himself. There are certain conditions that must be met before the will can become effective. These conditions are written in a preamble. I shall read it to you. Does all that sound right to you? We haven't heard anything yet. Listen to me very carefully. The first point in the preamble states that if any of the heirs die before the will is filed, the remaining heirs will divide the estate. The next point. I, Karl Kovic, do testify that exactly two years ago on this island of Nassau, on this date, I was seriously injured in a laboratory explosion. Due to the fact that the experiment involved the use of certain phosphorus salts, I was doomed to a slow, certain death. I knew that this explosion was not an accident and that someone had deliberately switched labels on two bottles. Furthermore, all six of you people had the opportunity on that day and date to commit my murder. And all six of you had a motive. When you find out which one of you committed this hideous crime, then the rest of you become my heirs. All right, let's put a stop to all the nonsense. Where's Kovic? I don't understand. Oh. No. Doc, come in here a minute, will you? Hey, Doc, I want to be sure that this is really Kovic. Is there any way that you can tell? Yes. I operated on him for a ruptured appendix. He was a very sick man. I saved his life, and all I got out of it was a suit claiming malpractice. It's Kovic, all right. But who was that in the other room? It must have been a trick of some kind. Yeah, a very convincing one, too. I'm going to talk to that loopy. All right, loopy, let's have it. What's going on? I know this is an ordeal for all of you, but I strongly suggest you think about what you have just heard. Mr. Kovic wants to know who tried to murder him. At 10 o'clock tomorrow morning will be the reading of the actual will, providing the conditions of the preamble are met. While I'm preparing something for you to eat, please help yourselves at the bar. Excuse me. What do you think? I don't know. She's got something going. You don't have much choice but to wait and see what she comes up with. Well, I don't know about you, but I heard Kovic's voice. I'd know it anywhere. And I'd swear on a stack of phone books, I just saw him. Well, I've been to a few seances in my lifetime, and they do some amazing things. But I must say, that was the most realistic and frightening experience I've ever witnessed. Loopies of my people, Doctor. 
Do not be so quick to pass off as just a trick what you have just seen. Surely you can't believe it was any more than a trick. We are a simple people, Dr. Corazal. More closely attuned to what you call the spirit world than you are. Evil does live on after death. I have seen it demonstrated. I think we're all missing a point. Now, the witness accusation of a dying man is admissible evidence in a court of law. Now, if Kovic believed that one of us tried to kill him, and he told Lupi this, then I'm reasonably sure the will could not be executed without a complete investigation. Well, we all had a pretty good reason to kill Kovic. If I remember correctly, there was an investigation right after that accident. Nothing was turned up. That's right, there was an investigation. That was an informal hearing, not an investigation. But the fact remains that we're talking about a lot of money. Over $400,000 each is a good rough estimate. And if one of us was eliminated by law, for the reason that Kovic suggests, each share would increase considerably. Well, aren't you the cheery little fella? Why don't you just relax? I believe we should all know where we stand. Well, I want to hit that bar. Holly gives me the creeps. Kovic never liked him. He just used him. I'm surprised he cut him in on the will. I'm surprised he cut any of us in on it. Oh, Kovic was a strange man. He was brutal, cold. But then he never had anybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like him to pick the six people that hated him the most and leave them all his money. <laughs> but it looks like we're gonna have to earn every dollar of it before we get it. Say, Carol, maybe I'm butting in where I don't belong, and you could stop me if you want to, but that guy, Matt, haven't you got something going for him? Does it show that much? <laughs> well, it does to somebody like me. <laughs> I've been around the track a couple of times myself. I speak from experience. But let me tell you, there aren't many of that kind left around. Say, what's the doctor's story? I never met him when I was seeing COVID. He's kind of interesting. I don't know anything about him, but he seems nice. Well, just between us girls, I think I'll find out. Well, don't let Holly upset you too much. I like to pick my own company. I can't imagine any more delightful company than you. Well, that's the nicest thing anybody ever said to me without his hand on my knee. 
They should suspect me more than anyone of killing Kovic. By agreement, the silver mines are returned to my people upon his death. I can't imagine you committing a murder, Mr. Tucky. I had every opportunity that day in the lab. I was trying to help him. At least that's the excuse I gave myself. He told me to hand him a bottle, and I gave him sulfuric acid. He was very upset. He told me that if he used the acid, it would blow up the place. Hmm. Think he gave it to him by mistake? I don't really know. But of course, he didn't use it. They could suspect me, too. I was in Nassau the day of the explosion. And you know I had every reason to want to kill Kovic. There is one great difference, Miss Carroll. A person like you is not capable of killing in anger. But for my people, killing when you have been dishonored is accepted. More than that, it's expected. He didn't do it. No chance. Want a drink? Hmm. Max. Why did you go away? Oh, that's a long story, Carol. Well, I can't think of a long story I'd rather hear. Okay. You think I'm a good engineer? My father thought you were great. And you know how I feel. Yeah. Well, when I was working for Kovic, well, that man set out with a dedication you just couldn't believe to destroy my confidence in myself. He spent days, I mean, a small fortune just to try to find flaws in my work. Everything I did, he just... Chop right to pieces. Once he even brought a man all the way from London to prove that my analysis of an oil deal was wrong. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I told your father. You know, I wanted him to get out, too. Well, you know how he was. And I left. By that time, COVID fixed it so I couldn't get a job, oh, for over a year and a half. Had to use a phony name once to get a job washing dishes. Matt, you know I'd have gone with you. I know. I wasn't about to start out our life making like a yo-yo with that character in there pulling the string. Well, Dad told me you'd warned him about Kovic. By that time, it was too late. Kovic had taken everything Dad had worked for all his life. was gone completely. He couldn't take it. One day, he just quit living. I don't think I ever hated a man as much as I hated Kovic. Yet when I saw him in there, I almost felt sorry for him. I just can't understand why he wanted to destroy everyone and everything around him. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it became an obsession with him, honey. You know, a lot of successful men have that same singleness of purpose and drive. But boy, with uh, Kovic, it became, uh, it just reached fantastic proportions. Yeah, he believed he was right and everybody else was wrong. You know, the night I quit, I told him I thought he was off his rocker. Boy, that must have really struck a nerve because he started screaming that uh, I was snooping around and... Uh, I've been talking to Dr. Carasol, and he said a funny thing. He said he'd fix Carasol so that nobody would ever have confidence in him again. I never understood that until this morning when I was talking to Carasol, before you people got here. The doc told me he'd found out that Kovic's dad was criminally insane. Oh, no. Yeah. I guess that explains why he wanted all that power and position, you know? Any way he could get it, to rise above the stigma of his father's insanity. You know, the doc thought that Kovic was a borderline case himself, and he knew it. Anything at all, you know, would just push him over that line. I suppose the accident that happened to him a couple of years ago just about did it. You know, I've about had it with this place. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, I was stuck here tonight. That boat won't be back till tomorrow morning. Well, let's say it was a trick. But we're missing the main point. And the estate cannot be divided until that point is settled. Sabu, could you prove your innocence? No, I don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying you did it. But could you prove your innocence? Easy. I'd claim that I'd fallen madly in love with you, and we went away for the weekend together. Then they'd slap me in the nut house, and I'd be home free. What about you, Counselor? Can you prove that you didn't do it? Of course I could. Well, then, why don't you not worry about me, and I won't worry about you? Deal? She has a point, Holly. None of us know what this is all about yet. You were born and raised in this area, weren't you, Dr. Corazal? Yes. I went to school in the States, but I came back here to practice. And you know people like Loopy. People who seem to have a knowledge others cannot understand. Well, I think I know what you're trying to say, Tunky, but uh, I can't be of any help. 
You see, education has a way of knocking some of the old superstitions and primitive beliefs right out of our systems. Most of them, but not all of them. Isn't that right, Doctor? When Kovic was burned, he turned more and more to Lupi. I think you and I are perhaps the only ones here who know really why he kept her with him. One of the voodoo superstitions, Sable, is that evil lives on after death and can be controlled. What Tunky is trying to say is... I think I know what he's trying to say. I just don't want to hear it. Well, I'm not going to listen to it. Kovic is dead, and that's that. I don't know what this little show Loopy put on is all about. And I think someone of us should be preparing an answer to a formal charge of murder. Or at least... Holly, shut up! You're so anxious to get your fingers on that money, you, you'd hang anybody. You little tramp. Just who do you think you're talking to? Take it easy, Holly. No, I mean it. The rest of us have a legitimate reason for being here. What does she do for Kovac? You can pick her kind up on any street corner. And then she starts crying when she gets thrown back into the street where she belongs. The only thing I don't understand is why Kovac put up with her as long as he did. Just a minute, Holly. Don't waste your time on him, Doc. Now, Holly, for the benefit of some of the people in this room, let's get a couple of facts straight. First of all, Kovic hated your guts. Don't you start. Oh, shut up. You know, coming over here, we all heard you shooting off your mouth about how Kovic forced you to work for him. Now, Sable knew better. I know better. And I'm damn sure Tunky here did. Everybody knows it was your fine hand that caused Tunky's people to lose the only thing they ever had in this world, their silver mine. Now, Kovic never forced you to work for him. He didn't have to. You found a fat calf, and you weren't about to let it go. Well, you don't even belong in the same room with Sable. And the only reason Kovic didn't get rid of you in the first place was because every time he wanted somebody to kick around, there you were, laying right in front of him with your tail wagging, just begging for it. Oh, like I said, shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry this isn't very elaborate, but it was Mr. Kovic's wish that we had no household help. If you get tired, you will find your bags at the door of the upstairs bedrooms I have selected for you. I'm sure you saw the stairs in the entry hall. Who can sleep? Hmm, Boris. This particular artifact, which is one of our oldest artifacts here at the museum, a nice little castle, a haunted house in itself, and banks seems to be doing fairly well. Let's see. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, okay. Well, I, I see that he needs a little bit of winding. Uh, oh, hello, hello. Uh, took a little intermission from the film, have we? Well, you, you caught Boris and I uh, checking on some of our artifacts. You know, since tonight is Castle of Evil, I thought I'd bring out some of my little castles of evil that got us started and continues in our uh, Museum of Monsters and Horrors. This is this little bank here. I got when I was only a little monster nipper around oh, around five years old. One of my first Yule presents under the tree. I can remember it as if it was yesterday, playing with the Lincoln Logs and little soldiers and other creatures that I had and putting them all around my little house. In fact, this little fellow here probably is what got me interested in making a museum in the first place. <laughs> Moving on to bigger castles of evil, a lot of you may recognize this uh, big little doozy. <laughs> Indeed, I think you will. It's Castle Grayskull from He-Man. Well, now, this particular castle may not be a castle of evil, but it sure looks the part, doesn't it, Boris? <laughs> and, because, uh, I mean, you've got this wonderful skull with a drawbridge, and, of course, on the back side, what do we have? We have castle ramparts and spires and windows to look out, and when you open it up, it makes a great 
great base for your action figures and monsters and creatures. In fact, you can put your gargoyle on top and it can be, well, a bigger gargoyle manner. <laughs> your uh, artifacts and large uh, monster exhibits and, and statues and things inside. Make your own museum, right Boris? <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed tonight's special spotlight of a month, the Monster Museum uh, artifacts. And let's get back to the show, shall we? Great. Can you make me some more Gostinis in a few minutes? Okay, I know, I know. I've got a little bit of a problem, but can you? Sure, okay. Let's go back to the show. Care for a sandwich? Mm-hmm. I can help you, Mr. Hawley. Yes, you can help me. You can help me by getting me a copy of the will. There is no copy of the will in this room. I don't believe you. Mr. Hawley, I tell you, there is no copy of the will here. I said I don't believe you. Where is it? You will all see it when the conditions of the preamble are met. I don't care about the others. I'm only interested in me. I want to see a copy of that will, and I want to see it right now. What kind of money are we talking about? Just exactly what does that will say? We get cables to come down here from a dead man. All we get from you is a lot of mumbo jumbo. I am following Mr. Kovic's instructions and I intend to keep right on following them. You know, I've got a feeling about you. I want to know if you are in that will. I want to know if you planned that accident in Nassau. That is ridiculous, Mr. Hawley. I don't think so. If you want to convince me, show me the will. Show me that you don't benefit by his death. I cannot show it to you. You tried to kill him, didn't you? I had no reason to do that. Mr. Kovic was very generous to me. But you had every opportunity at Nassau. I can make a case against you, and I can make it stick. His housekeeper finds that his estate is going to be split up among a number of people. Yeah, I can develop that argument. 
Listen, you get me a copy of that will or I'll break every bone in your body. I must follow Mr. Kovic's orders. Get it. I can't. You don't believe me, do you? I'll bring the will to you. I'll wait here. No, in your room. All right, in my room. Antisocial? No. <laughs> yeah, that Holly's something else again, isn't he? Well, Matt did quite a job on him. <laughs> you know, I envy him. Even as a youngster, I, I never had what you'd call a real fight. Oh, I worked hard to get through school. But I never had what you call a real fight. Uh, you know, like where two people stand nose to nose and you don't know how it's going to come out. It just never came up. Now, for the first time in my life, I feel as though I'd missed something. Doc, it's overrated. I've been fighting all my life, but I, I don't notice it's been much of a help to me. Well, maybe if I had a little of what you have, I wouldn't have been so easy for Kovic. Don't worry about it. That's the reason Kovic was on your back. He knew that you had something that he didn't have. You can't knock the goodness out of a man, and he found that out. You just stay the way you are. What is it, Matt? I want to try something. What are you doing? I got an idea, Doc. Look, would you all just sit down in the same seat you had when uh, Loopy was reading the will? Just for a second. 
Oh, uh, Doc, could you hit the light switch once for me? Now, I just found some kind of a dimmer up here. In a moment, I'm going to try it. Now, if I remember correctly, when Lupi was reading the will, she started out something like this. If any of the heirs die before the will is filed, then the estate will be divided among the remaining heirs. And she went on to say, um, I, Carl Kovic, about two years ago, was seriously injured or burned in a uh, phosphorus chemical explosion. And he, uh, he said, uh, I was doomed to die. And he also went on to say, oh, but the uh, explosion was not an accident. Just about that time, then the lights went down. Well, let's try it. Furthermore, every one of you six people had the opportunity on that day and date to commit my murder, and all six of you had a motive. A speaker somewhere in this lectern. When you find out which one of you committed this hideous crime, then the rest of you become my heirs. Well, that's part of it. There's your tape recorder. Well, that blows the spook bit. Yes. But it still doesn't explain how that body was up here. Let's try it again. Look, the fireplace is open. Matt, don't go in there. Hell, hit that switch again, will you please?
all know this setup is as phony as a carny game. You saw Matt when he found the tape machine. But that still does not explain how we all saw Kobe. No, it doesn't. But you're driving me out of my skull with this stuff about evil living after death. Things are bad enough without any help from you. Matt. Well, all he's dead. No. What happened? I don't know. The passageway eventually led me to his room. The place looked like there was some kind of a gang fight up there. Poor, poor man. Boy, well, he sure died scared. What are we going to do? I don't know, Carol. We've got a murder on our hands now, though. Mr. Granger, I just saw you upstairs. Hey, you listen to me, Loopy. You better come up with some answers, and fast. I saw you come out of Mr. Hawley's room. He's been murdered, Mr. Granger. Well, I didn't kill him. What else can I think? I saw you come out of his room. Listen, I don't care what you think. But you're going to tell me what's going on around here. Murder, Mr. Granger. Listen, Boopy. I know I didn't kill Hawley, but I happen to know that you know who did. Are you going to tell me nicely, or do I get the information the hard way? Huh? Perhaps I was wrong to accuse you. But who killed Hawley, then? I don't know. Don't hand me that. Nobody else around here could know. Okay, Loopy. But I'm going to find out. You were awfully rough with her. I know, Carol, but we're talking about murder now. What did Loopy say? Come on, what gives? Nothing gives. What did Loopy tell you? He didn't tell me anything. Yet. It's all right now, I, darling. I saw you. I, I saw Corbin. He went through that wall over there. And Luffy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. You'll be all right. She's dead. Doc, I think you better do something for Carol. She's hysterical. Take it easy. Let's get her upstairs. I have a sedative in my suitcase. Can you make it, honey? I'm all Here, let me give you a hand, honey. Dad, I saw COVID. Where? He was by that tapestry and was looking right at me. Doc, you better take her upstairs. I'm Bobby Gam Monster, internet horror host of Monster Movie Night, along with Boris T. Buzzard. And you're watching Monster Movie Night. <laughs> Hey, 
when I was a little girl. My mother used to say, Mary, that's my name. Mary Teresa Pulaski. That's a kick, isn't it? <laughs> she used to say, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Well, I didn't. <laughs> if I did anymore, I'd be hung by now. <laughs> On the other hand, my old man never said nothing. Never got drunk, except when he had a hangover. But he had a little beauty that lasted 30 years. <laughs> He looked naked without a glass in his hand. He never got drunk. He just stayed that way. Boy, he had a breath that would melt the ice off a windshield. Boy, what a guy. Yeah, feel better, honey? Good. Here, you just lie down. There we go. Put your feet up. Daughter of my people, are possessed of a great evil. Through you, the spirit of Kovac has returned from the dead. That spirit must be laid to rest again. In death, you must die again. Hold it, Marky. Give me that knife. It's the law of my people. The evil in her must be killed. Do not interfere. Wait a minute. Don't make me hurt you. You must think I'm a crazy old man. No, but I think you got some pretty savage ideas. Savage? Our customs were ancient before the Spanish conquered my people, a great nation. When COVID came to us, I was a chief. The responsibility of everything my people owned. I offered my hand in trust and friendship, and he tricked me. I had to leave in disgrace. Then I discovered, when I was an old man, that I did not have the courage to do what I should have done, destroy myself. But now, as though a light, long dead, is lit again, I can see once more. Perhaps it was the wish of the gods that I should live to bring back to my people the things that were taken away. Perhaps it was a greater test of courage to endure the humiliation of serving a man you hated and despised with every fiber of your mind and soul. I only hope my people will once more believe in me. Listen, Tonky. No matter what you think, Kovic is dead. But I still believe in you. And I'm sure your people do, too. Her spirit still lives. Listen, Tonky. Go upstairs, tell the doctor right away. And you stay with the women. I don't want them left alone. You should not have stopped me when the knife was in my hands. Understand it. She had no pulse at all when I left. Do you think you'll be able to get her to talk to us? I don't know. I'll try, but don't. Don't look for miracles.
it'll be for long. He shouldn't have touched me. I'm the only one he shouldn't have gone after. I took care of him for years. Kovic thought he was God. He created that electronic man in his own image. I saw him. Yes, that's, that's what you saw. Its brain is a computer filled with all the evil that was in Kovic. I convinced Kovic one of you tried to kill him. He brought you here to find out which one did it. That horrible monster was to destroy the guilty one. And it has. I know I'm dying. I killed Kovac to get all his money. But none of you will get it. That thing will destroy all of you. I planned it. It was the perfect way out for me. I tried to program you for my own benefit. But something went wrong. No one can stop him now. He's beyond control. You can't stop him, Matt. He wasn't supposed to kill me. I hate you, Kovic. Let's go check on Holly. We don't destroy this thing. thinking about Loopy. Doc's looking after. Loopy's dead. I know. Loopy is dead. I'll take your word for it. Doc, listen, I don't think we better tell them. You take this. Stay with them. Barricade that door. How about you? Well, if I have to go over every inch of this place, I'll find a way to stop him. Loopy's dead. Yes, I know. Before she died, she told me just what we're up against. What? You do what the doctor tells you, Sable. She'll be all right. Hunky, you come with me, please. Well, what did Loopy say? She was, uh, pretty incoherent. <laughs> Carol really did see something, didn't she? Uh, I'm afraid so. And you aren't going to tell me, are you? Now I really am scared. Don't be. Matt knows what he's doing. We'll just have to rely on him now. Here, give me a hand with this. Uh, 
There's nothing like hobbies to keep a person going, you know, especially when you're a mad scientist. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what we got going now. Yes, oh, yes, indeed. Uh, all right, on, let's see. Yes, we have the microscope, and we have... So now, on with the oscillator. Oh, yes, indeed. Okay. Huh. Huh. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. All right. All right. We've, okay, we've oscillated that quite enough now. And we'll... Yes, let's see what we got here. Mm. Swirl it around with the mixtures. Indeed. Let's take the old stirring. Ah, yes, invisibility. <laughs> oh, that would come in handy for one of these days. Oh, well, hello, 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 and welcome to uh, Gargoyle Manor's The Laboratory. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you've caught me doing a little bit of a hobby that, uh, that I love doing, mixing up chemicals and and uh, seeing what I can bring back to life or other way around. You know, you know, a, a person in uh, my line of work as a, a horror host and museum curator has to have other hobbies to keep themselves going. And, and I love mad science, don't you? <laughs> I mean, you get to mix things up and if you're very, very careful, you can actually blow things up. <laughs> Including yourself, if you're not careful, isn't that right, my friend? <laughs> yes, you're looking a little, little bony there. We're gonna have to do a few tests here and maybe get some meat on that uh, bones, as it were. Anyway, yes, let's put that there to uh, marinate, as it was. <laughs> oh, indeed. Well, what do we have? Oh, oh, oh! What do we have here? Ah, uh, mad science. Let's turn on. An extra, there we go, an extra, ah, oh, yes, here we are, that I've been looking for these all over the place, you know, you need, you have to have eyeballs every once in a while, as you can, well, as you can see them floating around in there, <laughs> you know, you, you never know what monster or creature that you make, you know, such as Boney back here. And then, and other things that might need an extra eye. You know, you know, you might need one yourself someday. <laughs> anyway, hope you're enjoying tonight's uh, feature film. At uh, I'm sure that they have a wonderful laboratory as well. I mean, ours may be small, but it's got quality instruments. You know, you can, you can, you can make sure of that. <laughs> yes, indeed. You can make double sure of that. So anyway, let's get back to the film, shall we? While I do a few more experiments and uh, in gen relax in general. Hmm? Boris, Boris, where's those Gostini mixture making? I, I'm feeling a little bit dry. <laughs> Gone. You know something, Tonky? It must be following some preset programming. Except a slight deviation, they would have to complete each act before it starts a new one. I hope we've got time.
a complete closed circuit TV system. Looks like a lab. You know how to find it? Yes, yes, I think so. Bums like a park bench. Married at 15, divorced at 22, divorced at 28 again. Oh, what a bunch of daisies I picked. You married? My wife left me when Kovic sued me. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> well, you know what he did to me. But it's my own fault for putting in with him. I should have met a nice guy like you. You did. And he thinks you're a pretty nice guy, too. Thanks. Oh, that makes me feel like my hair was natural. looks human. thing looks like a laser gun. Better stand over here, Tucky.
Let's get out of here. I don't do good is wait. I understand, but we don't have much choice. That's what kills me. You do understand. and it's after Carol. Doc, you all right? Yeah. He, he came through there.
down this way, quickly. Mmm, delicious, Boris, delicious. Thank you very much. Oh, well, hope you guys out there enjoyed the show as always. Hmm? <sighs> Did it scarify you to, well, do the double D, drop dead? Well, if you have, and if you did, if the person right next to you did, you let us know, because we we have, well, we have you fixed up. Right, Boris? <laughs> oh, I don't think anybody did. If, they did. if they did drop dead, I'm sure that they'll come back for, well, had they have to for the next time's uh, episode, right? Because <laughs> you never, never know what we may pull out of the museum in the vaults for the films and in the uh, rooms itself. Right, Boris? <laughs> right. Anyway, thank you for coming and be well. And as always, <laughs> keep screaming. <laughs>